Hello and welcome to this Formlabs webinar. This is a shortened version of the original broadcast. If you'd like to view the content in full, please click on the link below. Welcome, my name is Chris Eberhardt. I'll be today's webinar moderator. Um, the webinar topic today is rapid thermoforming with 3D printed molds. Um, and your speakers will be Juliet and Martin, who will introduce themselves in just a second. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chris, for this introduction. Um, and hi, everyone. Welcome. My name is Juliette Combe, and I am an application engineer at Formlabs product team. Um, my job is basically doing research uh, on uh, application for manufacturing and engineering and um, working closely with users and industry experts um, to, to develop workflow with 3D printed parts. Uh, I will be uh, co-presenting today with Martin Smith and uh, I will let him introduce himself. Hello everybody, Martin Smith here. I'm the senior, senior technical support manager at Formec. I've been with Formec for about 15 years and my background is industrial design and also um, manufacturing in the vacuum forming uh, industry. Um, hopefully we can help you today. Thanks, Martin. Very excited to be presenting with you today. So the agenda for today is um, I'm going to start about giving some context about rapid tooling for low volume production. And then I will explain the workflow of using 3D, print, 3D printed mold for thermoforming. I will show a few user stories and then I will hand the floor to Martin for uh, best practice from Formex or industry experts. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A session where you can ask questions to both of us. I would like to very quickly introduce the process on thermoforming. Uh, I have also a short video to, to show. So thermoforming is a set of manufacturing processes that heat and form sheets of plastic onto a tool. Uh, so you can see on this video uh, the type of part that, I was making, that are being done. Um, here is the mold being placed and then the sheet of plastic installed is being heated and um, vac vacuum form afterwards. Uh, it is a widely used process to uh, manufacture plastic parts and the range of application goes from disposable food and medical packaging, consumer goods and appliance, uh, but also heavy duty applications such as automotive component or inter interior train parts and so on. So you can see some example of parts in this video from Formec. And traditionally, uh, tools so or the tool or the mold that are uh, being used for thermoforming are fabricated from uh, by CNC machining metal for large production or wood or composite board for smaller batch such as foam or, or fiberglass boards. Um, this process require expensive equipment, CNC machining, cam setting for uh, and machine op operation as well. Um, outsourcing the mold takes um, a few weeks and can be quite costly. So it is usually used for a higher volume of production. And the question is, uh, how do you do if you want to produce limited quantities? Um, so another poll question today to understand e how you're currently manufacturing your tool today for thermoforming. Uh, so I know we have a lot of beginner today, so we maybe not have many answers, but um, I'll be very curious to know. So outsourcing, okay. Awesome. I just uh, launched the poll. I'll give it about 30 seconds, uh, and then we'll check back in in a second. Awesome, about half of you have responded. I'll give it another 10 seconds. Awesome, I'll go ahead and end it. Uh, to recap these results, it looks like the majority of folks who answered the poll, 42% uh, of folks outsource it, 27% um, use in-house 3D printing and 24% said other. Uh, back to you, Julia. Thank you. Yeah, that's um, interesting. And there's already quite a lot of people actually doing 3D printing. That's very interesting. Um, 
Great. So if you look at this graph, um, if you look at typical steps for product development on the Z axis um, and then versus the technology that is usually available on the Y axis, um, it starts on the left with early concepts and early prototypes and usually designer will use directly 3D printed prototype. Uh, and then it ends, the product lifecycle ends at uh, production with mass production using traditional manufacturing methods such as thermoforming. Um, but uh, what, what goes in the middle, there's, there's not many solutions for um, producing series of prototype or producing um, limited series of end-use parts. So one way to bridge this gap is by um, using 3D printed mold, what we call rapid tooling. And that way, a product designer can produce tools rapidly, as the, the name says, uh, so that um, they can do functional prototype using the final material, uh, so that they can validate the material and the design. Um, they can also use it to do affordable pilot production with hundreds of prototypes. So quite a large amount of prototypes that are either being tested in the field or uh, being tested for certification and so on. And then they can also do on-demand production with limited series of end-use parts. All right, so just a quick intro about Formlabs for those who don't know us. So we are a designer and manufacturers of professional 3D printing solution. Uh, and desktop printing is really a powerful tool to fabricate tools rapidly and at low cost because it's easy to implement, um, it's easy to operate and maintain, and it's also come with a complete ecosystem. You can see on this picture our SLA ecosystem. We produce the hardware, software, and materials. Uh, so it's uh, very easy to, um, the, the learning, learning curve is very fast. And this requires limited equipment and allows you to save time on CNC machining, saved skilled operators as well for other tasks in the meantime. Um, so that really allows you to produce tool rapidly and introduce that in your product development process to bring a product faster to market. And I mentioned the, the picture before was our SLA ecosystem. SLA uh, also stands for stereolithography. It is a great choice for molding uh, because it is characterized by a smooth surface finish, a high precision that will be rendered from the mold to the parts. Uh, it also facilitated the molding. And uh, prints from SLA are chemically bonded. Uh, and they are fully dense and isotropic, so it produces functional parts uh, with a very high quality. We also have high performance material in our SLA library that can withstand temperature and pressure uh, that are typical to thermoforming, especially high temperature. All right, so now let's dive into the workflow of how to use 3D printed mold for thermoforming. I will here give a highlight of the basic step and then Martin will later on give more in detail recommendation on how they've done it in-house at Formmec. Uh, I want to mention also that we have just released some uh, technical content, a white paper, a quick start guide, and also a um, table gathering different feedback from customers so that if you, uh, you want to reproduce this application, um, this should help you step by step and give you some good recommendation. So first we have in the white paper, we have uh, guidelines on how to design the mold for thermoforming. It is pretty similar to designing a mold, um, a traditional mold for thermoforming, uh, but you can also incorporate, for example, additional air vents that will help to have a stronger vacuum. Uh, and this, is, can, this can be directly incorporated in your design, in your CAD design. So this is one of the great benefits of 3D printing. Um, we recommend having a mold that is hollow and with ribs that will um, help rigidify the, the mold, but Martin will, will go into detail with that a bit later. Uh, regarding 3D printing, uh, we've, uh, we've had customers working with a lot of different resins. Um, there are uh, three main resins that can be used. Um, 
among others, but for draft, draft resin is one of our material that is printing uh, the fastest in our SLA library. And so that will be the preferred one for low number of units that you need to iterate quickly if you need to produce a prototype quickly. Um, it has higher layer height than our other resin though, so you will have um, a bit less uh, resolution. Um, if you want to move to gray resin, then you will have a smoother surface finish and it's um, more appropriate for intricate details, um, but still for a low number of units. And then the third uh, choice, um, the rigid 10K resin, is, uh, has thermal resistance as well as another resin called the high temp resin that um, Martin has also been used. And this one can handle high temperature. So if you are doing uh, production, um, sorry, condition close to production with very short cycle time, with high temperature, thicker sheet, um, and a high number of units, then this is the resin that will be uh, the most suitable. As mentioned, we gathered um, uh, feedback from customer. So this is a resource that you have available on our website, uh, and we can also um, uh, share it afterwards. This, uh, this is basically sharing uh, different materials that has been used, that has been formed, and how many cycles has been done with one mold and so on. It's not, it's not readable really on the, on the slide now, but I just want to show what type of asset is available. And from this different feedback, I just want to mention that um, the kind of takeaway from that is that we've have been customer has been testing different material such as HIPS, ABS, PC, PTG, PEPP. So a couple of different type of material, a couple of different thickness as well, 0 0.5 millimeters to 4 millimeters. Um, the sheet temperature can go very high as well, up to 200 degrees C. And uh, in terms of mold failure, um, we've most of our users have tested um, without seeing any mold, mold failure. So up to 50 parts, but without even seeing the mold that breaks. So we assume that we could do much more hundreds of parts, most likely. I just want to share a couple of user stories that have uh, tested this application with 3D printed mold. So the first uh, user I want to mention is a research center called IPC. They are expert in uh, plastic processing, and they've been they've been also doing some previous work with with Farm Labs on injection mold as well. And now the latest project was to test three um, D printed tool for thermoforming. They have been um, thermoforming sheet of IPS, HAPS and ABS uh, of three millimeter thickness, so quite thick for automotive parts. And it worked very well for them. They, they were doing about 20 parts, but they didn't need more, but the, the mold didn't break in their test. So you can see the part here. It's also interesting, they incorporated a, a lot of different design features, such as engraved details, some draft angles, some sharp edges, um, so you also have all the details in the white paper. Um, one point in this study is that they added uh, cooling channels to decrease the cycle time. They wanted to test in condition close to production with short cycle time uh, and, and also like running a lot of part at the same, like in the same time. So to maintain and to monitor the temperature of the mold, they added, added cooling channels. This is a pretty big part. It was printed of our, on our from 3L, and the cooling channel really helped to maintain the temperature of the mold to about 75 degrees C, something like that. And this is a picture of the mold that is being um, installed on the plate. And on the right side, you can see a thermal uh, camera that they were using for monitoring the temperature. Another example is a company called Glassboard. It's an engineering firm, and they've also been using a 3D printed tool for diverse purpose, as well injection molding and also silicone molding. And they've been testing, they've been using thermoforming uh, mold, uh, 3D printed mold for thermoforming, sorry, um, for diverse uh, projects, um, some uh, consumer good prototypes such as helmets, but also just some, uh, this picture of just some 
uh, talk that are being tested and they print with drafts uh, when they need to be fast and iterate quickly sometimes gray as, gray as well and they've also been um, testing rigid 10k um, this is um, yeah this is so this is the picture that you can see of the of the mold on the left And the final uh, example is Lush Cosmetic that has been also using 3D printed mold to thermoform some uh, plastic parts that are then being used to mold soap. So this is also an interesting case. Okay, hello there, everybody. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, I think it's got some images of uh, the parts that we produced. So you can see in the, in the picture here, we've got some tooling, gray tooling, We've got uh, vacuum formings that have come off the tooling. And now those vacuum formings are going to be high impact polystyrene in the, the blue material and the white material is uh, 1.5 millimeter ABS. Um, so we were approached by Form Labs to try and test out some of their resins, the latest uh, resins that recently introduced. Uh, we had a Form 2 and we also had a Form 3L. So we were more than happy to, uh, to see what we could do with these new resins and just to see, you know, do they really fit into the sort of the vacuum forming market? Um, can they seriously be considered as an alternative to the, the conventional tooling methods, which might be machining aluminium or tooling board or wood, uh, plaster Paris even. Um, we wanted to make a good assessment of them in, in a sort of professional manner. Thank you for tuning into this webinar preview from Formlabs. To view the content in full, please click on the link below. Alternatively, if you'd like to get more information on our products and services, then please visit our website.